With typical software, when you are in a submenu and you don't find the option that you're looking for, you have to go back to the main menu and then go into the next submenu and so on, back and forth until you find what you're looking for. With Millwright, all you do is turn the wheel on your mouse to jump between the submenus. I'm turning the wheel right now and it's jumping between one submenu and the next. To remind you of this option, the mouse icon will often show the message Turn Wheel for Next Menu. The icon sometimes shows the message Slide Left if Done to remind you that you can get out of the submenu by sliding the mouse towards the left. When your mouse is over a button, the mouse icon is a finger, but for certain buttons, such as the Save button, the icon changes to a tiny blue mouse with a blinking red arrow pointing to the right mouse button. When you see that icon, it means that that particular button allows you to click your right mouse button in addition to your left mouse button. The right mouse button will bring up a menu. For example, the mouse is over the symbol button and the icon shows that blinking red arrow on the blue mouse. If I click the left mouse button, I get the menu to insert a symbol from either the Millwright fonts or a true type font. I will cancel that and this time I'll click the right mouse button. This brings up a different menu which lets me add symbols to the Millwright fonts or view a font. You can also cancel most menus by clicking the left mouse button outside of the menu. Notice that when you move the mouse outside the menu, the icon will often change to show a red Cancel button. That Cancel icon is to remind you that you can cancel the menu by clicking outside of the menu. Most Windows programs have both an OK and a Cancel button, but many of the menus that Millwright uses have only an OK button. For example, when you click the Layer button, there is an OK button at the top, but no cancel button. To cancel that type of menu, just move the mouse outside the menu. And when you see the mouse icon change to the red cancel icon, click the left button. This is faster than moving the mouse to a cancel button. Another way to cancel menus is to click your right mouse button instead of the left button. This will cancel a menu no matter where the mouse happens to be. For example, I clicked the layer button. Notice that the three mouse icons at the bottom of the screen show you what each mouse button will do. The right mouse icon shows that it will cancel the menu. I'll put the mouse inside the list of layers. I will now click the right mouse button. It cancels the menu. This is an even faster way of canceling menus because you don't have to first move the mouse outside the menu or to a cancel button. Perhaps the most confusing aspect of Millwright is that you click the left button about half as often as in a typical Windows program. Millwright is designed to reduce the number of times you click the mouse buttons. To understand this, I'll open a job file of a Navy logo. When you want to inspect or modify an item in a typical drawing program, you first have to click the item in order to select it. With Millwright, you do not have to click an item to select it. All you do is move the mouse over it, and it will be selected automatically. The right side of the screen will show you information about the item. When I move the mouse off of the item, it becomes unselected, and the information about the item along the right side of the screen is replaced with buttons. If I move the mouse to some other item, then that other item becomes selected and information about it appears along the right side of the screen. I have not yet clicked the left mouse button. When an item is selected, you can edit the information on the right side of the screen by sliding the mouse over there and clicking the left button one time in that area. The data fields in this area let you change the item or its tool information. Notice that some of the data fields have a small red arrow pointing downwards. Those red arrows are to remind you that those particular data fields have a menu. So if you click one of those data fields, something is going to appear. Some of the data fields have two tiny red arrows that are going around in a circle. 
That is to remind you that those data fields have two different options, such as yes and no, or clockwise and anti-clockwise. When you click those data fields, they toggle back and forth between their two options. You can also toggle them with the keyboard. When the cursor bar is on the data field, press the Enter key or the space bar. When you're at the drawing page, Millwright expects you to use your right mouse button to set the functions of the left and middle mouse buttons, although not many people use the middle mouse button anymore. When you click the right mouse button, you'll get a menu that lets you determine what you want the left and middle mouse buttons to be. Clicking the right mouse button can bring up one of many different menus. Which menu appears depends upon what the mouse is over at the time and what you're doing. If the wrong menu appears, look in the upper left corner of the menu to see if there is an icon of a corner of a piece of paper that is turning to the next page. That means that there is another menu behind this one. If you click that rectangular area that has the turning corner, it will bring up the next menu. I'll select the slide node function. Once you set the button, it remains that way until you change it. When I move the mouse over some geometry, the mouse icon changes to show that it is set to slide node. Therefore, if I click the left button right now, I can slide the node. When I move the mouse off of the geometry, the mouse becomes a plain arrow. And when I move it back over some geometry, it returns to slide node. I'll click the right mouse button again, and this time I'll select the function to delete item. Now, every time I move the mouse over some item, the mouse icon changes to show delete item. Every time I click the left mouse button, the item is deleted. When you're finished deleting items, remember to change the mouse by clicking the right mouse button and selecting some other editing function. Otherwise, you might accidentally delete items. Most software has keyboard shortcuts, or some people call them hotkeys. Some keyboard shortcuts require you to hold down the alternate or the control keys and then press one of the keys on the keyboard. For example, in most Windows programs, control O is the shortcut to opening a file. And holding down the control key and then pressing the F4 key will close whatever file you're working on. The shortcut keys show in the menu along the right side. The caret character represents the control key. For example, control O will open a file, control S will save a file, and control F4 will close a file. When you do not use software very often, you can forget what the shortcut keys are. To solve that problem, when you hold the alternate or control key down with Millwright, a menu appears on the bottom of the screen to show you what the shortcut keys are. Notice also that some of the characters in the menu are a different color. Those are the shortcut keys. For example, in the phrase, find a command, the letter F is a different color. That reminds you that control F is the shortcut key for find a command. A lot of software displays messages along the bottom of the screen to remind you of your options. Millwright puts more messages along the bottom of the screen than most software, so become accustomed to looking at the bottom of the screen. Along the bottom left corner of the drawing page are three mouse icons which represent the left, middle, and right mouse buttons. Next to each icon is a short description of what that particular mouse button will do if you click it. Those icons and messages provide you with information, but you do not click them. For example, right now the right mouse button is set to Menu New Item. That means if I click the right mouse button right now, the New Item menu appears. This menu allows you to draw items visually with the mouse, or create some text. Notice that in the very upper left corner of the menu, above the arrow, is what is supposed to look like a piece of paper with a curled corner. This is to remind you that there is another menu behind this one. If you click that curled corner, it will access the other menu. 
and clicking it again will take you back to the previous menu. As computer screens get larger, it becomes more difficult to find the mouse and the cursor bar. To make it easier to find the cursor bar, Millwright uses an animated cursor bar that moves dots around the data field. Most software uses the file functions of Microsoft Windows. At the setup page, you can default to either using the Microsoft file functions or the Millwright file functions. Each of them have advantages and disadvantages. To see what the Millwright file functions look like, just click the Files tab. This will let you browse through the files and folders on your hard disk. The file list is along the right side and the folders are along the left side. The Millwright file functions let you view images, DXF files, and CNC files with certain limitations. It also has the option of showing DXF files as images. However, this feature is working only for DXF files that are in the older format and do not have any inserts or blocks.